Hello. I went on a little mission to go get cinnamon rolls for the family, but I found myself on my favorite little terrace. I saw it was empty with an amazing view of Reykjavik's famous church, Halgrimskirkja. So I've stopped here. I'm a little hot chocolate, a little nibble to eat because I realize I haven't eaten lunch. And I'm going to talk to you guys for a quick second about the questions I get asked all the time about playing a trip to Iceland. So we're just going to do like a speed around here so that you've got quick, easy answers to help you plan your trip. Okay, let's go. recognize it from Instagram all right the first question what's the best time of year to come to see the northern lights that's what everybody wants to know so I think like peak season what they would say is October through March um, I've come in September maybe seven times and I've seen them every time so I think it just depends there's an app that you can track um, the northern lights on for your stay that'll give you a good idea of when you can come and see them um, I mean, it's more like by the week, it's like a weather forecast because it really depends on how cloudy the sky is gonna be. Because if it's cloudy, you can't see anything. So that's what you're looking for. Okay, the next question I get asked, do you need a car to come to Iceland? Okay, if you're coming for like a long weekend, I think you should base yourself out of Reykjavik and then take like just the tour operators that like run Northern Light Tours, Golden Circle, Southern Coast, just do that, it's easier. But if you're gonna be here for like four or five days longer, definitely, definitely rent a car because that's how you're gonna like see so much of the country. And the good news is it's called the Ring Road because it's a ring around the country. That's the highway. So you can either go this way or that way. You're not gonna get lost. Um, it's so easy. I would drive here. I have driven here. We do drive here. Um, now we typically do um, like we're with groups so we'll have a coach, but it's so easy to drive. And especially if you're gonna be more than like two people, it's just the price savings are gonna be way, way, way better if you have your own car. Okay, the next question I get asked is if you're traveling with a car, how do you do car seats here? So there's a few ways. One, if you rent a car, which I'd recommend, when you arrive to Keflavik, which is the main international airport, it's about an hour away from Reykjavik, um, you can like do Hertz, budget, whatever, and they have, rent, or they have car seats you can rent there. Get one there. Um, we've had transfers come in before um like take us in that have car seats um i've got that on my iceland guide if you want that contact information you can do that you can't just get in a taxi though like so in london if you arrive to heathrow you can get in a taxi without a car seat for your kid and they'll drive you in it's illegal here so you do have to have a car seat figured out so um yeah i would either bring yours if you're gonna rent a car if you're up for the you know carrying it around or i would plan to rent one so one time I had them like Amazon to me <laughs> like shipped here so that I had a transfer in and then for some reason I had a car so you could do that too if you want um, okay the next question hmm. okay the next question I get is the food expensive y'all it's it's so expensive here like it's stupid we got pastries at a bakery that we loved the other day and we got six of them and two lattes and it was like 48 bucks what it's crazy like if you're gonna go out to dinner, I would say at least $50 a person for an adult, at least. I mean, it is an island made out of kind of ice, so they don't have a lot of their own food. They do have greenhouses, but I mean, they just import a lot. So yeah, you're gonna pay for it. Um, it's good quality though. So yeah, even the hot dogs are like lamb and good quality, but it is expensive. So what we do to combat that or to save money is we rent apartments and we cook a lot of our meals like breakfast and lunch. And then typically um, we'll go out to dinner or we'll, yeah, we typically do one meal out a day and it saves a lot of money. I pack my own spices because they're like five bucks a you know, jar here, but they're cheaper if you buy them. Oh, there's the bills. Look, so like the food, it's expensive. I just paid $7 for this. Kind of a lot for a hot chocolate. But, I mean, you've come all the way to Iceland, so in moments like this, when the weather's beautiful, when you find an empty balcony overlooking an amazing landmark, splurge a little bit. That's why I say, like, be cheap for some stuff, like breakfast that you don't care about, lunch, eat sandwiches, but then in those moments, don't be too cheap for seven buck hot chocolate in front of Hallgrimskarkia. Just lean into that moment. All right, another big question. Footwear! Oh! I mean, I think I spend most of my time, not most, but a lot of my time on every travel consult talking about what shoes people should wear when they come to places. And Iceland especially freaks people out. So I would say, as our friend Johannes told us the other day, if you wear tennis shoes to like climb like on a glacier hike, you look like an idiot. But if you wear hiking boots to dinner in Reykjavik, you look like a tourist. So pack two pairs. So we typically have um, 
hiking boots for like the outdoorsy stuff and then I'll wear shoes like this. <laughs> Those are from Bowdoin, um, just for walking around Reykjavik, like a normal person. And it's February right now, so this is like pretty good weather. Last year when we were here, I mean, it was like a blizzard. Um, but yeah, I would basically say pack things that are gonna be a bit more waterproof um, and warm socks are crucial. But yeah, look cute sometimes, look practical the others. Okay, it got a little bit chilly, so I put my coat on. Okay, another question is how young is too young with kids to Iceland? Honestly, I've taken my two youngest here when they were eight weeks old. I think maybe one was six weeks old, I can't remember. But I mean, the only thing that you can't do is do um, the Blue Lagoon with them. And if you're gonna do like a glacier hike, I probably wouldn't wear my baby on a baby yarn wearing crampons. Although I have done it in the into the glacier, like ice tunnels, so it just kind of depends. Um, but I would say Iceland is the perfect place to bring your kid um, if you're wanting to get them like used to travel. <laughs> they love kids here, they're used to them. It's like, there's not a lot of fussy places. Um, it's easy, they can run around, you don't have to pay admission for them to go in and see stuff because most of the sites are free. Like waterfalls don't cost money to go see. Okay, another thing people wanna talk about is the food here. Okay. Yes, it's expensive. You're gonna pay a lot, but it is good. It's not bad quality. Like when you're out on the ring road and stuff going to places, the only kind of options you'll have are N1, which is basically a gas station. Sometimes I'll have a Quizno in it, but they'll always have like a little grill. And I mean, you're gonna pay 30 bucks for a burger and fry and Coke, but it's not a bad burger and fry. Like the food quality, sometimes you feel like you're overpaying. But when you come to restaurants like this, I'm having like a tartan with goat's cheese and honey and pear. It's delicious. Um, so in Reykjavik, there's so many good options. All of my travel guide, food is important to me. I would not let you guys down. Um, so check out there and you'll find like more than enough restaurants to fill up your time here. Some cheap, some not. Basically every meal of the day is accounted for. So check it out. Another question. How do you save money here? Okay, so first of all, the flights are always pretty cheap here. Hotels aren't crazy. We rent an apartment, which is cheaper than getting two rooms, which we need with kids. And we bring our au pair because, I mean, she lives with us anyway. So we might as well have her and flights in and around Europe are really cheap. So we bring our au pair, but even still for the five of us to come for an entire week on flights, I'm sorry, the six of us, it was 2,600 pounds. Like that's pretty good. I got it on Expedia. So flights and hotel are never your problem. It's really food um, and like the blue lagoon. So those are the ways like you're gonna spend your money. So plan for it. And then the ways to save your money are bring your own food, buy it at the bonus here, which is the grocery store. Um, the sites like the waterfalls, all those things are free. You can go to cheaper pools. Obviously the local pools are a great cultural experience. Um, they're literally like swimming pools that people go to every day here. It's like a total thing. Um, it'll be the most Icelandic thing you do while you're here is going to a local pool. But if you wanna go to like the sexier ones, like the secret lagoon or the blue lagoon, they're gonna cost money, but it's not, I mean, the blue lagoon's kinda crazy. But like the secret lagoon, all those things aren't as, aren't as horrible. Um, Horseback riding, that stuff costs you money, but if you don't care about riding the horse, maybe stay at a horse farm like Hestamer that I have linked in my travel guide, or you can just stop alongside the road and like see the horses, if that's all you really wanna do. It's like take pictures and touch them. Other ways to save money, I mean, shopping's horrendous here. Like sweaters are gonna be 300 bucks. They have the flea market every Saturday and Sunday that's got good stuff, but if you're looking for like cool Icelandic antiques, like think about it. The country's not, I mean, it's old, but like it hasn't been inhabited for too long and there's only like 200, 300,000 people here. They're not gonna have a ton of antiques to shop from. So if they do, they're gonna be expensive. So it's just kind of a fun place to go and find like tchotchke souvenirs, but like old sweaters and stuff. They're just, there's not a lot of people here to have that much excess. So you do pay for it. Okay, last two questions. First, what are the easiest day trips in and out of Reykjavik? So it's gonna be the Golden Circle. It's gonna be into the glacier if you wanna go up to the Western Fjords. Um, it's gonna be, um, it, yeah, like South Coast tours. So those are gonna be the three that you can do really easily. Um, what's gonna be like the more extreme day trips? The last question, Land Manalager, like up in the highlands, you would want a super Jeep there. You can take some hiking trails. Um, but I'd recommend doing super jeeps. You can stay out there too if you rent cabins. Um, the glacier lagoons, which are way far um, to the east, but worth it. It's kind of like as far east as you can go. I love the glacier lagoons though. You can't do it in February. You can't actually get on the like amphibian boats and go out in between the icebergs, but you can do it in September and other seasons, like other like warmer times when it's not frozen over. Um, and then the western fjords are really cool and underrated, and it's 
you know, more of like that small coastal harbor town feel. It's where they filmed a lot of Walter Mitty, so it's got that like charming little colored houses on the water. Tiny, like tiny populations, maybe a thousand people in these places. So it's not gonna be like the, you know, food scene or anything like that, but it's gonna be cozy and it's gonna have some cute stuff. Like, um, yeah, it'll just happen upon like a random Andy Warhol print and like, or like painting and things like that in the Western uh, fjords. I don't know, they just have weird like little towns with strange little treasures in them, but anyways, those are the three places I'd say is like east to the Glacier Lagoon, um, up into the highlands to Land Manalager, and then the Western Fjords. Um, if you kind of want like a cozy, non-touristy place, because let me tell you, the tourists all go south. They don't go west, but it's, it is cool. All right, so did that answer your questions? I hope so, because those are kind of the questions that I get asked all the time. So now you know, you can travel to Iceland, you can bring kids, you can rent a car. You don't need to learn Icelandic because everybody here speaks English and there's so much to see, so much to do. You may want to save a little bit of money for it though because it could be expensive. So have a great trip. Follow along below. You can subscribe and keep up with all of our adventures. Bye!